Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Listen, young lady, I don't know who you are or where you came from, but you most certainly don't fit in this town. Why, you don't even fit in that dress. This is episode 172, recorded January 6th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic, or not-so-classic, film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl. Crystal, how are you? I'm great. If you can't tell, uh, we're... Uh, talking about someone very special tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, going to say that. I'm not going to say anything gonna, about Tassel. I'm going to start <laughs> clucking like a chicken here in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, like, what, what, what? <laughs> I'm going to be like one of those Tex Avery cartoons with the eye. Ooh, <laughs> guy, <you know. laughs> I'm like, move, 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 move. Yeah. Positively I, just, I just can't take my eyes off your hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now I don't know how to do her like twirling tassels. Oh, okay. oh try! I do want to learn that. That would be amazing. Yeah, she's so talented with her face. Also, she's like... <laughs> also with us tonight is Mr. Chad Hunt, writer, director, producer, comic book guy, co-host of. Decades of War, the classic era of the 1970s. <laughs> Chad Hunt, how are you? Friggin' awesome. I can't get my boobs to do that, but I'm trying. You could, yeah. Uh, Bet you can, you can do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh. All right. And last but not least is... I just threw up in my mouth. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> and let's keep it there. Let's keep it there. <laughs> Writer, director, special thanks to Rue. Uh, and uh, all around a, nice guy, Bill Miller. All way to crush a good mood. <laughs> Crystal had us all happy as babies. Doc, I, I mean, Doc, I, I just called Jeff Doc. See, this is what's going to happen. We're just, so, we're just so hypnotized by your beauty that we're like, uh, the, what gruesome man? I don't know what we're doing. And then Bill, you got uh, yeah, Bill, 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 Bill. Yeah, and then Chad comes in and puts an image in my head that I don't think I have enough alcohol in this house to erase. <laughs> but I'm going to try. I will inform Doc that you just insulted him later oh, on. Uh, You'd love Whoa. it, Bill. You'd love yeah. it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, tonight we have a special pick from yeah. Mr. Put Crystal back in there. There you go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> anything better than me. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Yay! Yay! Released 30th of September, 1988, directed by James Signorelli, write, written by Sam Egan, John Paragon, and Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira. Cast includes Cassandra Peterson, William Morgan Shepard, Edie McClurg, and Susan Kellerman. Upon arriving in a small town where she has inherited a rundown mansion, a famous horror hostess battles an evil uncle and town people who want her burned at the stake. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, Why there you go. Me? I don't know. Uh, because. Hey, Crystal. <laughs> we're there. We're all four of us. All four of us. We're, yeah. we're um, a happy family together. We're a happy family. We are. We are. We should, I should just leave everybody in fours, and then we don't have to worry about it. Like the bird. Yeah. Um, all right, so this was uh, produced by, or, or was a production of NBC Productions and New World Pictures and Panacea Entertainment and Queen Bee Productions. Wow. That could never cause any problems. Yes. Um, yeah. Also known as Elvira, her Sharon, der Dunkelheit. Der Dunkelheit? I, yeah, I didn't look it up. <laughs> but I like the way it looked. <laughs> Just, just uh, on the safe side, if you're in Germany, don't compliment a woman on her dunkel heights because it might not go well. 
It might yeah. not. It might not. Not true. Or might. Um, the, uh, it's filmed at, I, I, I don't know, is this famous or something? Higgins Verbeck Hirsch Mansion in, in L.A., but also <laughs> Raleigh Studios in L.A. Uh, and Warner Brothers Burbank Studios in L.A. So <laughs> lots of stuff in L.A. Uh, filming took place January 20th to 1988 and March 18th. From January twentieth to March eighteenth, the budget wow. oh, okay. was That's not approximately about. seven and a half million dollars. That seems a lot. Yeah, it it does. does. It does. Uh, opening weekend and multiple sources. Every place I went was the same on this. Same with these uh, uh, box office numbers. Opening weekend, uh, one million six hundred sixty thousand. Hmm. And again, that was uh, around the first of October nineteen eighty eight. Gross. 5.6 million, which eh, is not eh. seven and a half million. Nope. All That's right. crazy, though. I, 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 I feel like maybe if she even made one now, it would be much more successful. I feel like they yeah. didn't market it well. I, I don't yeah. remember really the ads for well, much of anything. And actually, guess what? Um, what? <laughs> the movie was produced by NBC, which set up a distribution deal with New World Pictures and just as the film was slated to hit theaters, New World filed for bankruptcy. There you go. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. The marketing campaign, oh. yeah. They stopped the marketing campaign and it was scaled back from thousands of theaters to just a few hundred. And uh, since the mm. critics uh, panned it pretty heavily, they didn't really go for a bigger spread, but it ended up being a bestseller on video and one of the highest rated programs of the year when NBC aired it in 1990. You know, it, okay. it always doesn't it shock you, though, that it, it turns out, oh, it's like, boy, I can't wait to see what Vincent Canby of the New York Times says about our movie Elvira. They had to know yeah. the critics were not going <laughs> yeah, to what? put this I up there. Know. You know, Schindler's List or Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I don't know. What's best well, picture? They had to know. That I think the problem, too, is the critics, because if you're going to review an Elvira movie and you don't know what to expect and you don't base your critique yeah. off of that, you're not a good reviewer, in my opinion. It's like, <laughs> if you know you're going in for this, like that's why I try to be a little bit, I try to understand where the movie's coming from. Oh, right. this was, this is campy, this is cheesy. That's exactly what we got. Great, mm -hmm. you know? Well, apparently 1988 was a bad year for movie companies because that was, I think, what happened to Pumpkinhead with uh, oh, yeah. uh, oh, De Laurentiis so Entertainment Group, right? It went out of business and went, uh-oh. With that, the do you think, in the theater and everything, and when we postponed it a year. Do you think that's the year that the, the video market was kind of killing the low-budget movie market? Yeah. Oh, could and, be. And, Probably, and so there, yeah. there had to be an adjustment, and then movies started being made just for video but of course the prices got cheaper i am kind of amazed that it cost seven million dollars because i it's it's a good looking yeah. movie but it's not a i don't see where the money went well there's, there's some there's no, like some, hardly any practical effects yeah uh, there was some information about the las vegas scene at the end that they cut the budget and so they didn't have that in but then when they showed what they had to the producers or the studio guys then they okayed the money for the las vegas scene which i don't know that's, inter that's interesting I, I guess they were encouraged for some reason uh even though that was cut a little bit as well hmm. so you know it's kind of hard to make a movie when the the uh, goal line keeps changing I think. right yeah right seven million Ooh, maybe the i hope six of it went to cassandra well, yeah. I hope she. I hope she held them so, up but... for a bundle of money, because she makes the movie. She's the only reason to watch the movie. Yeah. So there's a lot of recognizable character actors in this. Oh yeah. Movie, but, yeah. But, uh, yeah, she's the only. <laughs> Production wise, so yeah. it looked looked good. You know, I mean, it looked yeah. On par yeah. with a lot of other yeah. horror movies. Of I like the story though too. Come on. It's funny. It's yeah. silly. It's cheesy. It's, it's so a, stupid. It's footloose but with funny. bones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Footloose needed more of, more boobs. And, and we got it. Yeah. Well, there was Kevin Bacon. Right, well. Oh. Yeah, so yeah chat. I do like Kevin Bacon. Chat. <laughs> Is this, this thing on? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for the taglines? <laughs> oh, here we uh, go. 
Oh, God. Yeah. Actually, I'm not ready for these taglines. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't think they're that bad. Well, the first one's the best one, of course. Elvira busts out in her ah! outrageously funny feature <laughs> film debut. The, the, I see the, what the, you did there. She the, busts the, out. The, the, when she did, does. You, did you get it? Because I didn't so I think it was kind of subtle, and I don't know if anybody would catch on you know, that. That's yeah. what the movie is clever for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see if there are any more. Well, it, 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 here's something you'll want to pick up. Which hey. what the hell does that mean? I, you know, uh, I, okay, okay. What? I think it makes sense if you see the poster where she's like hitchhiking. Oh, okay. But Otherwise, I just would think you'd want to pick her up, like to date. Like it doesn't. It's not. That's that that's. I, I'm sure that's what they're going for, but it sounds kind of. Yeah, it sounds like something like a supermarket. You, know, you want to pick this up some bacon on your way home from work? Yeah, it's, or it's not Elvira's uh, hitchhikes. Uh, yeah. hitchhikes to oh, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Elvira makes her big scream debut in her hot new comedy. Uh, I like the big scream debut. Yeah. Nothing like stating the obvious, though, is there? It, yeah. It, yeah, that pretty much is. Uh, thank you, Captain Obvious. Yeah. I think it would be cute if it if it just if if it wasn't a tagline, but it was just Elvira's big scream debut somewhere on there. Yeah. And yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> cute. And her signature line: "Unpleasant dreams." See, I always say pleasant nightmares. Hmm. I kept thinking that's what she said for some reason when I was a kid. Wasn't well, totally backwards. Idea. Yeah, that's, an, that's more of an Adam family vibe going there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Here comes Elvira. There goes the neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> it's painfully lame. Oh, yeah. We'll stick with okay. the first. It's like a dad well, joke. So those mm. are the taglines, folks. Uh, not inspired. No. If you don't like them, let us know. Uh, we'll keep doing them anyway. <laughs> so what uh, would y'all have done? Maybe maybe when we oh do these God. taglines, we need to come up with taglines well, maybe, ourselves. Hey, you know what? Maybe we should do that because we've been ripping on taglines since we started yep. this. Maybe we should all like make an effort to come up with our own taglines, and then the audience can decide whether maybe we should keep our big pie holes shut because we're no better <laughs> than they are. But um, <laughs> we did that on Classic Era one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Taglines, but, uh, I would have just had uh, Elvira write the taglines because she's witty enough to have probably she's come witty. up with some good ones. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let's get into first impressions. And since this is your pick, Bill uh, Mulligan, well, when I did you first see this? Okay. Um, I thought this would be a good palate cleanser after the uh, happy-go-lucky family film that was The Hitcher. And I first saw this film... Two weeks ago. What? Yes, I had never seen this film. I know. Oh, oh, come on. Oh my I, I, gosh. I I've seen bullshit. it like three times this year. Yeah. I call <laughs> bullshit because there's a crawling <laughs> hand in it. No, I didn't know about the crawling hand, but it, nah, ne next not buying week, it, Bill. Not buying next it. Just staring, <laughs> next to just staring at Elvira, that was the thing that made me happiest when that thing popped up. I'm like, yes, score. <laughs> you know, I, I'm <laughs> convinced that Bill found a crawling, crawling hand data film database somewhere. You know, it's it's I'm going to go find a monkey, <laughs> monkey with a scalpel. Uh, <laughs> oh well, good luck. There aren't <laughs> too many of those. Um, no, you know, and it's funny because I liked Elvira. I watched her show. When it came out, um, it was it was syndicated. I think in I, I think I'm, I don't know where it was. Maybe Denver. I don't know, but whatever it was, I watched her, and I really enjoyed the character and and the actress and everything. But I just I don't know that the movie was out long enough for me to get it. And from the trailer and all, I just had the feeling that this just sort of felt a little cornball for me. I wish I had seen it because I, I did enjoy it. it. It's I mean, is it a good movie? No, but it's a great character. And, and here's the thing. I have a real fondness for um, comedies based on characters. I love the Abbott and Costello movies. I love the Bowery Boys movies, God help me. To me, this is like, <laughs> this is like a 19... Like a Don Knotts kind of movie. Are Don Knotts movies the best movies ever made? Probably Mr. not. Yeah, yeah Mr. Mr. Lincoln was pretty good. Ghost, and, Ghost, Ghost and Mr. Chicken, Chicken is a pretty yeah. damn good movie. But for the most part, it's like it's like Don Knotts is an astronaut. Okay, take my money. I'm going to go. I know exactly what this movie's <laughs> going to be. 
I am not going to be surprised by anything in a movie called The Reluctant Astronaut starring Don Knotts. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to get, mm -hmm. and they're going to give it to me, and I'm going to enjoy that because I like Don Knotts. And everyone's happy. There's nothing wrong with this kind of formula. It's not for everyone, but for those who it is for, it's exactly what you want. I like that. And I wish this movie had done well enough that we could have had Elvira in space and uh, Elvira opens up a, a motel and Elvira does whatever, basically Medea with Elvira instead. Um, so I, I had a good time with it and I'm kind of sorry that I hadn't seen it. it. What's funny is asking people about it. Most of them haven't seen it. And the ones that have say, oh yeah, I like what Crystal just said, I watch it once a year. So one of my Halloween traditions to watch Elvira. So for a movie that technically by most standards is not all that good, cardboard characters, pretty corny jokes, but it has something that a lot of movies don't have, which is one compelling character expertly played by someone who knows it inside and out. I mean, this woman has devoted her entire career basically yep. to portraying this character. And and I love that. I love it when an actor or an actress embraces it. You know, maybe you had dreams that you were going to be doing Shakespeare. And instead, you're Elvira. But by golly, people like Elvira. And you're mm -hmm. good at it. And, and she will play that to her grave, which hopefully is many years after I die. I mean, she is she's amazing. I don't know how old she is now. You don't ask those sort of things. But she still looks awesome. And she does appearances. And she oh, manages yeah. to still look great. She's living the role. And I just respect the hell out of that. She stays out of the sun. Good for her. Mm, that's oof, that's the worst thing for me. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I, that's that's some good points. I, I like that idea of the, uh, the the dominant character that that she knows inside and out. Yeah, she's really good at that. Uh, Crystal Cleveland. When was the first time you saw this, and what were your impressions, and how has it affected your life? <laughs> <laughs> So obviously I, I saw this movie when I was a kid at some point and I was like, oh my God, I had seen Elvira on like TV and because I watched, I was, I liked the old horror movies and I just remember being mesmerized by her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh my God. Like, you know, I mean, she's hot. And I just thought she was, she's funny. This movie's absolutely, okay, so I, I saw it as a kid. Of course, I've always loved Elvira. I mean, she is a caricature of a goth girl, babe. And her vehicle, just everything about her. Like, she's perfectly, she's a perfect simulation of what, like, the perfect goth girl would be. I just love her. I think she's fabulous. She's, she's spunky. She's witty. She's take no prisoners kind of. And even though she dresses the way that she dresses, she is like, you know, F you, if you're going to, you know, I can dress how I want. I do what I want. Yeah. So yeah, like exactly. she's, it, yeah. So she's kind of empowering in, in mm -hmm. a interesting way, even though people are like, oh, her dress. no, she's, it's, it's a different sort of feminism. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just, I love I just think she's just so fabulous. I think that um, this movie is absolutely one of the most ridiculous movies I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I've, I have. I've seen it like three times this year. I watch it all the time. I think it's so funny. It's so silly. I love that she's not afraid to just make fun of this character. I mean, yeah. it's easier because it's not her. You know, she's a different person. So, mm -hmm. you know, she is playing a role. But that's a scary role to play, really, because people will look at you in a certain way if you play a role like this or you do something. It's good. It's better now, but I mean, you know, back in the day, back in the day, you yeah. know, it <laughs> like people are like, Ugh, she's a, she's a, she's a bad girl. She's this, she's the hoochie or whatever. I don't know. And it's kind of funny because why, well, she does, she does say some lines that she's like about the squeaky bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think it's just, I yeah. think it's definitely a movie that's just lighthearted and meant to be watched with humor and it's silly and dumb, mm -hmm. super dumb and super good. I don't know. I love it. Yeah. I love her. I, I wish, uh, yeah. I wish we had a ton more. I just <laughs> think that the, the, the witty sexual humor totally plays into my inner child. I think it's funny. So, yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. Busting out. I had a feeling you liked that. Uh, Chad, (laughs) when was the first time you saw this? I I rented this off the shelf (laughs) as soon as it came out. Yeah, I was a big Elvira fan, and um, I always loved Elvira. The the Lily Munster meets uh, Adam's family Mm -hmm. with the Henny Youngman. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. you know dumb jokes you know uh, um it's just and she successfully that, i mean that's what that character is i mean you know that's what she is and she that's what she brings brings to the movie and um so if you like her in the roles in in the her show her tv show you know she just and i think successfully she brought it over i mean it, this was it might be a commercial failure, but a lot of people say, "Oh, it's stupid." But it's it's if you like Elvira and you're a fan of Elvira, you should love this movie because that it's her essentially uh, doing what she does with the the weird sexual humor and and the just deadpan <laughs> delivery on everything and the smart ass comments uh, from being hit on in the in the uh, the bowling alley by the two idiots. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just her up and down, and this is just her. And I think Bill kind of touched on it too. Characters that have to get their own, you know, movies or whatever, um, like it is is a thing like Strange Brew with Bob and Doug McKenzie, yeah, CTV, and those type of characters kind of transitioning over from TV and, into movies. This is not a bad one if if you understand Elvira and the character of Elvira and, and what she's all about, then, then this, this is your movie. And, and I've always loved it. And yeah, I watch it every, maybe every other year, you know, every other Halloween, if not every Halloween that it comes out. Um, even though I do use the, uh, uh, the prime or whatever I'm watching it on the 10 second fast forward review when the severed hand comes around. <laughs> I forgot but, uh, about that too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah, I love this movie. Yeah, that's such a clean swipe. Uh, <laughs> they all actually, are. Uh, th- this is the first time I've seen it as well. Uh, and about two weeks ago, as soon as Bill picked it, I watched it. And uh, I can't um, believe it. Well, I don't think so. If it showed around here, I was not aware of it. I was aware of Elvira, you know, as a media figure. But I never saw her show. Um, hmm. Wow! So I don't know. What was it? Movie well, Macabre, I think it was called. What was it on? Yes, Movie Macabre. Was it on a cable network or was? I think it, it was syndicated. syndicated. Yeah, it was yeah. syndicated. Because no local channels around here would have picked it up. Because Iowa. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, Footloose. Footloose. I'm telling you, like it was. It's weird. <laughs> like Texas has everything. They're like. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a late night monster movie thing on Saturday nights, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't of that quality. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I knew who she was, but I'd never never seen her show. Never, I kind of knew her shtick because I'd seen clips or mm-hmm. such everywhere. So yeah, it took me a minute to uh, get used to it, but it was it's it is a fun movie. I, as the first time, not knowing that much about her, uh, the. F- the first part of the movie, I felt like she was over over punching the jokes, you know, mm-hmm. too much. Uh, but then it, <laughs> she sort of like lightened up a little bit, and then it felt more natural, and it seemed more funny to me. I don't know. Uh, maybe I just got used to it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, That's and, and <laughs> they're not they're not complicated jokes. Most of them are one line asides, right? Like yeah. you know, what Chad said, Henny Youngman, right? That's, and they were they were old when we were young, so yeah. 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 So. Uh, but they do catch you by surprise sometimes. So it was fun. And there's a lot of good character actors in this that they get to say some really stupid things <laughs> for this movie. Um, some of which were probably kind of early in their career that went on to become a little more recognizable. So, uh, yeah. So I enjoyed this. I, I think they were trying to, uh, there was some, NBC was planning to like do a TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that didn't pan out. Yeah, or, they, that was their plan, and I don't know what stopped them. Maybe it was just going to be too risque back back in the day there, so they decided to do a movie instead. And 
see where they could go from there. And of course, the, the fact that the movie didn't do well probably killed any chance of either one happening. So, well, you, I would think it was a smart thing to do, but they, uh, I thought I read that they put the uh, the teenagers. There's a group of teenagers in this that those were added. Yeah, later. And she she didn't like that, but I think it was a good idea. Oh, I think the teenagers are hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. The one teenager was um, one of the Freddy movies, the wizard kid. Oh. Hmm. Oh, okay. I can't hmm. remember which which nightmare it was. Dream Master, maybe. Which kid? Or the dream? The one with the glasses. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ira. Dream. Ira Hayden. Maybe it was Dream Warriors. I'm not sure. I was. I but I think their addition was definitely to to the movie's benefit because, you know, they were the characters were not well drawn out, but but it made sense. If Elvira had shown up in my town, I'd be there painting her house too, and and the kids are likable as opposed to their parents and everybody else. Without the kids, the whole town is just a miserable place that ought to be burned yeah, to the ground. It's not. There's no redemption. Yeah. Like, I, like Iowa. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, there oh, go all man. our fans from Iowa. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that listened. I, there are horror fans in Iowa, but they have a hard time connecting. Uh, yeah, but so I was it, it was uh, it was Dream Warriors, Chad. Was it okay? okay. Yeah. yeah, he was the was wizard good. wizard kid, I think. Um. So yeah, well, and just I'll plug plug this. There is a uh, podcast that's been running for a long time called Attack of the Killer Podcast. That comes out of Iowa, out of a tumble, I think, and they have a good name. They have a, sh a horror short festival every year called Halloween a Palooza. Oh, that's fun! <laughs> so Ooh, we should put something in there, Bill. Yeah, we, we should. should. Do something. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not That'd saying that if you take us into your festival, we'll plug you on our podcast. But I'm not saying <laughs> we won't either. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Guess you got. Yeah. Guess you got the reward first. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, so we've got. So, has Cassandra Peterson done that much before this, or is this kind of her? Ooh, I don't know her in anything as herself. I, well, I, I, well, I, she was, no, she was in the big adventure. Big adventure. Yeah, she was the she was the the woman at the bar when he does the, the biker bar, thing, yeah. the biker mama who's like in a do something terrible to him before he decides to do the tequila, the big shoe mm -hmm. dance. Well, they were in the oh, same oh, oh. comedy troupe, uh, the Groundlings ground together. Oh, yeah. ground so was Edie, yeah. Edie McClurg, I think, was in there too, I think. Yeah, is actually. That the blonde? The, Edie McClurg is a pariah. Oh, right. Pariah. So yeah. stupid. Yeah. I don't know their yes. names. I'm sorry. Uh, the blonde is, is it Kathy Kellerman? Uh, he looks so not related too. to Sally Kellerman. Which is like the first item in her IMDb bio. <laughs> oh, that's great! <laughs> no relation of who, Sally Kellum. Like, known for not being Sally? related to someone else. Um, I was just I trying to find that either. information. Uh, God, I thought I had that all up at the. At the anyway, window. yeah. So a bunch of those people were in 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 the Foundlings. Um, so interestingly, you talked about uh, tassels. Yeah. Uh, and, and according to the information here, she learned how to do that as a 14 year old go go girl. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> I guess there was, was a, a go go. Time. She was a go go dancer, 14 year old. Uh, taught how to tassel twirl by a stripper. What was state is that legal in? The same club. I don't she know. She probably lied about her age. West Virginia? Oh, that's she that wasn't was allowed to do the pastries, but she says, she claims, she talked to her the mom. Pastries? The pastries? The pastries? Yum. Pasties. <laughs> uh, did I say that? Uh, yeah. 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 They are. They are pasties. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. And, yeah. and all... <laughs> this movie's a bad influence on us. <laughs> she, uh, she says that she talked her mom into creating a tasseled bra from an old bikini top. And that that's how she oh, practiced. Oh, yeah. And they had them on that. Mm, okay. So she had the coolest mom ever, I guess. Clearly. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah or, or something. Like or that. something. Yeah. Wow. She's She seems pretty, pretty okay. Pretty grounded. Pretty. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and the character, yeah. too. I mean, the character claims to be slutty, but it's she really just, isn't. Yeah. I mean, really, in yeah. the whole movie, she only goes after one guy. She's not. She talks about, I'll throw myself on strangers, but she really doesn't. She turns down mm. every goober who comes along. In fairness, they're pretty low on the scale. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to, okay, I'll tell you what this reminds me of. Um, I've never been a big fan of burlesque because I hadn't really seen any. And all I knew about it was, you know, what I thought I knew about it. And at the last Dragon Con we were able to go to, a friend of mine who does burlesque took me. I helped her move stuff from one hotel to the other. And I got to go see the show. And it was an eye opener in many ways. It was not <laughs> what I thought it was. I thought it was just basically nerd stripping, you know, um, stripping oh, wow. with, with a comic book theme or something because we're at Dragon Con. But it's actually very, there's a lot of art and, and humor to it. Yes, there's a lot of skin, but frankly, no more skin than you're going to see at the beach. It's That's just, true. it's the artistry mm -hmm. of getting to that point. And, and there's, there's body humor, but it's not really smutty. There's a difference. And I, I think the Elvira character there's a lot of sexual innuendo, but it's done in a very playful way that yeah. makes it not offensive. She reminds me of, she's like the goth version of Dolly Parton. You know? Oh, that's funny because people call me that. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, my uh, friend, she's like, you're the goth Dolly Parton. See, you're and so I think, sweet and, I, and kind. I, I hope they mean that as a compliment because Dolly's amazing. Oh, yeah, amazing, they do. I love Dolly amazing, Parton. So, so, yeah, I think yeah. That, that's, uh, that's high praise. Yeah, I love it. Or maybe she's like, the country Crystal Cleveland. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Y'all. So I. Y'all. <laughs> looking at the people that were involved in the film. Uh, it's weird he, when I laugh. I feel like I'm like, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually don't wear you're anything at, like this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, hey. <laughs> but really. It's not making your voice deeper. It's not I, I, your that's not yeah that's encouraging I, never you to wear anything. I know i never wear anything this low cut so it's like i mean i'm seeing myself too and i'm like wow how does cassandra <laughs> like see it takes balls to do that you know what i mean like yeah you have i have to give her a lot of credit because yeah, yeah. it's hard to put yourself out there just gonna say that yeah. sexually and especially with confidence and to ignore the haters and you know i mean that's a that's a hard thing for a woman to do yeah. in this day and age, much less, you know, she's done it her whole life. Like I have to give her major credit for that. She, she strikes a really good balance between she doesn't take herself seriously. I mean, she, yeah. she you know, has that kind of self depreciating humor, but that's, that's a common thing for female comedians at the same time. You get the, you know, she does that, but she also takes no prisoners. She's not afraid yeah. to put these idiots down and, and, you know, call them on on their bullshit and everything so it, it she she walks that line it's and it, she does a really good job she but really she's does. so sweet she's sweet like with the yeah. with her love interest it's she's really huge yeah. it is cute <laughs> yeah, he's in the truck oh. that was hilarious <laughs> but i like that too it's funny it's interesting yeah. that he's the one that's not all yeah. over her you know yeah there's yeah, a weird good. innocence there kind of clueless yeah yeah um so what did we say the the, the uh, director is james signorelli who worked for saturday night live other than that oh. i see uh, he was a camera and electrical department on phantom of the paradise oh. way back when uh but could, as far as he used a little more of that pizzazz um i yeah here's 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 my one criticism of the movie i mean i like the movie a lot but when you hear who she wanted to have direct it, yeah. Mm, yeah. you flash mm. to an alternate universe where that happened and we'd be talking about a whole different movie. If Tim Burton had gotten the chance to do to this character what he did to Pee Wee's character, all bets are off. Yeah. Mm. It would have been amazing. Well, and apparently uh, uh, Pee Wee or Paul was, was supposed to appear in this movie, but he had a conflict while oh. he was filming his second film at the same time. Uh, they so, do seem like they would make they make an odd couple but a smart couple yeah, cuddling, you know yeah. the same sort of people i think because i love bb herman too so right. go figure he's so strange i i admit that i watch bb herman every saturday morning yeah <laughs> mech like guy mech guy 
<laughs> but it takes it takes a visionary director to be able to take these outrageous characters and make a story around them and kind of embrace the the insanity go, go into their world and everything uh, elvira is great in this but it's like elvira in a world that you know i mean she, she's a fish out of water kind of thing and i guess that works but i really would have liked i really would have liked to see what burton could do because when wow, you can you imagine oh yeah <laughs> peewee's big adventure is a an amazing movie that movie blew me away like i, I went in like okay i've heard of peewee herman this is going to be stupid and i walked out like this is the future of movies. It was, it was <laughs> so much better. I don't know if there's any movie. <laughs> if there's any movie I went in with lower expectations and came out more impressed than Pee-wee's Big Adventure, I don't know. But then you see Big Top Pee-wee, and it sounds like a winner. Pee-wee Herman in a Circus. That sounds like a winner. But I don't know who directed it. I don't remember who directed it. And there's the problem. I think it takes a Tim Burton kind of person or Brian De Palma, for that matter, that would have been interesting, to be able to kind of take these crazy characters and amp it up and, and give them a surrounding that's worthy of them. And I don't think yeah. that happened here, but, you know, so we get what we get. Well, did you see who else auditioned that almost got hired? Yeah. Crystal would have liked this. Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for who? For for her love interest? No, or he's for one of the boys. He was a kid at the time. Oh, okay. I was like, I you know, I don't find Brad Pitt attractive. No. Nope. He's not my thing. Well, he's at any way. She he's said just too pretty. Oh, hey. She thought yeah, he was, well, we we're in good luck. She doesn't like the pretty boys. <laughs> she said, hey, hey, what? That uh, Elvira would not be interested in Bob, her love interest, if Pitt was one of the teenagers trying to get her. <laughs> <laughs> but they said on the casting note, she wrote yum yum next to his name. <laughs> 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 Is that awesome or what? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. If you get turned down for a job, having you know Elvira write yum yum in the rejection letter is uh, okay. I can still walk with my head high. That's, That's hilarious. Funny. I do, you know, it sucks. He, I guess he was too attractive for that. Mm. Yeah, boy, it real su sucks to go through life looking like Brad Pitt. Yeah, I will <laughs> say he's gotten better since he's gotten older. He's better looking now. I think. I think that's fair. It's like fifty. I think he's better looking because, you know, he's got he he's he's got some rugged, a little see, bit more ruggedness. See, Brad Pitt, and I, I mean, Brad Pitt's a really good actor. But he's the kind of actor I'm not that crazy about in that he he's a good actor in that he can take on a role and do a good job and everything. But if someone did a dead on Brad Pitt impersonation to me, I wouldn't know. It. I wouldn't yeah. know. I, I wouldn't even know how to begin to do a Brad Pitt impersonation. Um, but I prefer someone like a Christopher Walken. Someone does even a oh, bad yeah. Christopher Walken. I know who they're trying to do. <laughs> OK, Chad, come on. I'll practice. <laughs> so, you guys tell me you know you know about more about her history was her car kind of famous or was that oh, just god i love her car movie? i think she, well, she shows up in that car, car all the time the 58 she keyboard yeah mm -hmm. i think so yeah she i don't know if it's still the same one everything. but it's yeah it's got like spider web like grill mm -hmm. oh it's so fabulous her mm -hmm. car is like it's amazing <laughs> car. really like that car. car um <sighs> yeah maybe that's where the seven mil went <laughs> that's right off the vehicle ah, that's so sweet you guys you guys are comic book guys did you see this comic book mm -hmm. the marvel comic book first yeah, yeah. Of, uh, yeah. Venom. who say that again that? the first uh appearance of the character venom spider was spider-man villain well what? the spider-man so they, no, he rips up the Spider-Man comic book. Oh, uh, oh. Jeff Conaway rips up the Spider-Man comic book. Uh, Two ninety nine was the first appearance of Venom and the first one Todd drawn Todd by. Todd McFarlane. Yeah, um, but I was thinking of the. There's actually a Marvel comic of this movie. Oh, okay, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. I was that's like, I was thinking of. I think it was a Mar Marvel used to put out these magazine type books called marvel super specials and, oh, okay uh, i'm gonna write this down they were more of a mag <laughs> magazine type um i had the kiss oh, okay. one i think i had the elvira one too yeah there were two, ki two kiss two kiss ones hard to find 
Who did the art for the Elvira one? Because I remember. I can't, I can't remember now. It's been so long, but they are hard. The Elvira one's hard to find. Oh, I'm sure. I bet. I yeah. probably can't afford it anyway, but still. <sighs> Maybe a listener yeah. out there will know how to get their hands on one. Yeah. Yeah. Get you it. Make, if you want to make a crystal smile. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's uh, let's and talk. If a you're not that great looking, you know. I'm trying not to smile now. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what? What about the effects? I mean, there's not a lot. Oh, they're horrible. But... They're horrible. <laughs> they're really <laughs> terrible. The best effects are the makeup on the baby. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, that was funny. That was funny. I was uh, laughing so hard. Oh uh, god! Time. Yeah, <laughs> really. The baby's but, just like. <laughs> <laughs> my mother brought me here what am i what, what am i doing <laughs> but you I, you kind of expect poop effects don't you i mean it's really it's that really bad 80s like lightning stuff that yeah. they loved so much for some reason i don't it know. would probably look out of place if it was really top notch but yeah i agree it wasn't the, 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 with the rest the, of the movie the casserole yeah. monster was was really good. Good. yeah that was a cool yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. When, actually yeah I, I, I thought the casserole monster was cool. What about uh, Uncle Vince's makeup when he started to go? Oh, he was he was okay. Too. Demonic. Yeah, he looked like a, a, a cool. vampire to me. Anytime they did the you know the zappy effects with the ring, it just reminded me of Dracula versus Frankenstein. It was like a a little better than just scratching on the emulsion of the film with an exacto <laughs> knife, but not a whole lot better. It reminded me more of the Schwartz from uh, yeah. Yeah. Spaceball. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, when, when, when a movie opens up with It Conquered the World, I don't expect to see yeah. Harry Housen yeah. and, uh, you know, no, it's not going to be yeah. Pumpkinhead's special practical effects here. Although I loved her, and I might want, I don't cosplay at all, but I would consider cosplaying her in the Ram, with the Rambo thing, the Rambo outfit. I think that's oh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's such, so cute, so witty. The hardest part would be making that gun, which is nothing, really. Yeah. Hmm. So Edie McClure played Chastity Pariah. <laughs> was, I don't know. How would you describe her character, Chad? <laughs> Almost the same character she plays in every movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the, the, up, the uptight uh, lady, nosy, busybody, neighbor lady that's always, uh, you know. Or she's either a sweet little motherly type, you know. Uh, yeah. Like from Ferris Bueller, she was his principal's assistant, you know. But she kind of always a has dude. a little bite. I could, they, yeah. the kids think he's a righteous dude. They think yeah. he's a righteous dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ferris Bueller, I don't know. She's still around. Uh, she's another, she was in play, uh, not the uh, Pee Wee's uh, movies, but his original show. Oh, and, and oh. yeah, she was she was in there with him too. Was she one of the groundlings? I think so. Yeah, yes, sure. She, absolutely, she was. Yeah, okay. So if all those ever, guys had kind of a little, you know. Yeah. If you show. ever get a chance to watch uh, HBO, is to show it all the time. They they filmed the play that Pee Wee started, yeah, in, yeah. and it had um, oh god, who who was it? The guy who Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman, he was so good. Oh. Uh, yeah, what a tragedy. They also had the guy that played Blackula. I can't remember his name right now. Oh, William he Marshall. Was yeah, King, he was the king, king of, of cartoons. cartoons. Yeah, yeah. He was king of cartoons. And uh, then yeah. later played by Lawrence Fishburne on his TV show. Now, the, the one you're talking about, Bill, was a more adult oriented oh, yes. uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, you know? yeah. So it was a not not it wasn't it wasn't smutty, but it was definitely right. Like, right. It was more for a geared toward adults. It was, it was like Elvira. So yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And if you get a chance, if you can somehow find it, I it's been forever since they used to show these things on uh, HBO and Showtime all the time. I think you short, should have, and then they uh, disappeared. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe so. Mm -hmm. um, she's been in. Uh, she's another one of those people who's been in almost everything. Um, mm -hmm. She's a righteous dude. Yeah. <laughs> The Dukes of Hazard. Um, <laughs> did some well, she, she plays one character, but she plays it perfectly. She, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and you can do variations on that one character. She can be nasty. She can be sweet. She can be a little ditzy. You, you know, when she shows up on the screen, 
you smile. She's one of those character actors that I think can work for as long as she wants to work because she she found her niche, and that's that's a cool thing, I think. She she loved that casserole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, all, they all loved it. Yeah. <laughs> the way she was like uh, licking it, the bowl. Oh god. So other it's, other. Go ahead, Crystal. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Well, I was, I was just, just going to say they left it open to another movie with her being a witch. Like it would have been really cool to see to see oh, her yeah. get some powers because oh, yeah. because when she was leaving, it said the magic is in you. So she didn't even need the ring or anything. I think there's so much they could have done. It's too bad. Would have been very fun for her to be, you know, yeah, the little witch with their gonk. Yeah. So Edie McClure. And I have a white poodle too. Oh, that dog was cool. That dog deserves mention. That was, he was a I lot of fun. I should have. Do you remember Gonk? It's just funny because I didn't know that the dog's name, or I forgot that the dog's name was Algonquin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which, it was short for, yeah, Gonk is short for Algonquin. The dog yeah, is I was great. Like, I mean, it was like a, 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 like, what is that? Was that like a punk dog? A poodle. Or a, yeah. Oh, a yeah. Punk poodle. oh, no, no. Yeah, the, way it was, the way it was uh, geared. Uh, oh. Yeah. It was, well, made, I like, have a white like poodle. A poodle. Oh, Crystal, Two. so you totally have to cosplay as Elvira. You've got the yeah. poodle. You just need to give him a little mohawk on the top, just a little. Cass is big, though. I wish I should have brought him. I can't believe I forgot to get him up here. Let's... But he is like, he's weird and bit, and he's like. Oh, he's, he's, a, just... he's not a toy poodle. He's, a... That's he's, right. he's Let, not Crystal. standard, though. He's Crystal, just... if you're walking around looking like Elvira, you need to have a big dog with you. Wouldn't that be awesome, though? That would, be. would and, be. And and teach him to sick him on anyone who gets a little too fresh. Uh, that would be Oliver. Oliver does that. He he's like, tear him up, boy. Mamas, uh. that's my mamas. <laughs> so of the groundlings, we had Edie McClurg, Lynn Marie Stewart, Daryl Carroll, Joey Arias, Arias, Tress McNeil, and John Paragon. Well, I know Tress, John Tress McNeil is also a voice actor for The Simpsons. I think she, oh, oh the Boobarella uh, character on there. Oh, kind of a, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Tress McNeil uh, did the. That's funny. Uh, and um, oh, I just uh, Paragon is uh, the uh, gas station attendant. Yeah. The guy that was with um, Jeff Conaway, his little assistant there, his little uh, yeah. sidekick. He was the guy in the Chuck Russell version of the Blob, who was the projectionist, who was stuck to the oh. ceiling, oh, and yeah. the yo-yo kept coming down. Good oh thing. yeah, yeah, Frank Collison. Frank Collison, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was a uh, terrifying uh, effect. In that movie. So good old Jeff Conaway. All these names. Whew. Whew. Taxi, Jeff Conaway. Taxi is what almost everybody knows him from. Right. That and celebrity rehab. Grease. Ooh. He's in Grease. Um, yeah, oh, Grease. Okay. Mm -hmm. See. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. There we yep. go. Ah, you got Nikki. me now. I'm yep. like, who are we talking? About? He had a yes. recurring part in Babylon Five too. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, he did. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. And I met him at a convention. He was super sweet to my daughters. Yeah. Who were very young at the time and everything, you know, just an, a good guy who he had a lot of like struggles. Nice. Yeah, but he had a lot of struggles with alcohol, and it's it's just that's a sad story and how often we see it repeated. Yeah, um, is, you know, it's really is just he too still. Bad. No, you know, he he passed away pretty young age. Oh, yeah, okay. I wasn't sure. Um, that's uh, sad. yeah, he was sixty one. Um, yeah, oh, but that sounds pretty young to me right now. You no, know, Chad, I found, I was just looking through, I, I, I didn't find the Marvel one, but I found a comic that I do remember. I may have it. If I have, if I find it, Crystal, I'm going to send it to you. It was DC's Elvira's House of Mystery. Yeah, yeah. What? I, wish I, I wish I could flash it up here because yeah, it was she was by good. Brian Boland, and it is amazing. It is an, a beautiful um, rendition That's of so her. Cool. It's sort of a out. comic book version of her TV show where she kind of hosts the story. Right. Story, each story in the in the book. That's so awesome. Yeah. I don't know if what this is going to work or not. What a great life. Yeah, there we go. To like... Oh, that's the comic oh. book. Oh, that's the Marvel comic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cute. I didn't take the time to put it on a card, so you know. Oh, gonk. So cute. 
Love that stupid dog. Yeah, it's all right out of the right out of the movie. <laughs> yeah, um, it looked, looked like a Richard Corbin cover. It did kind of look a little. Who, who we just passed away? away? Yeah, who just passed away? Yeah. I'm not really sure who did the cover. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Death is dumb. Hey, death is dumb, and we're sure seeing a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Now, did you know? According to this, it says her dress was cut mm-hmm. in a certain way, and her hair was long on the back to hide burn scars she had on her neck and shoulders. Yeah, from yeah, a, from I, an accident in her youth. Yeah, I, I had heard that. Oh. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. But it, which bad. just to me makes her even more badass. They hear, you know, she had something that left her. You know what? What a lot of people would probably figure. I'm disfigured and everything. I'm just going to wear long sleeve turtlenecks for the rest of my life. And instead, she comes up with a way to make that work and doesn't hide from it. Ah, yeah. it's, it's, it's great. No, she had a body a body double who looks exactly like her. I mean, they could pass for for twin sisters. Wow. Who did a, who did a lot of the shots where? Um, that was the case where they maybe couldn't show part of it okay. her back or something like that. But um, yeah, just amazing how closely they resemble each other. Well, then I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. They didn't do the old uh, vaudeville gag of her standing in front of a mirror with the twin on the other side. That's not really her twin. And, and, <laughs> right. And, yeah. And that would have been funny. That's, that's like the oldest joke in the world. And most of those old jokes ended up in this movie. So right. yeah. Oh, Crystal. $65 yes. on Amazon. Ooh. For that comic book? For that comic, yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's great. How about we just yeah. get so, a high-res version of the cover and then put it out for you? <laughs> Uncle Vince. Uncle thing. Vince, played by William Morgan Shepard. Now, this guy had almost 200 credits. Wow. And he, he's one of those guys you look at, or I looked at, and went, I know that guy, but I couldn't place him. Um, but he's been in everything from he was in a Dexter episode. More recently, he was on the series wow. of Librarians. He was in a lot. I of, love the Librarians. He was in a lot of Star Trek Next Generation episodes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and in uh, Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered hmm. Country, he was a Klingon commander, apparently. Ah. So yeah. But, but he wasn't the person that they wanted for the job, right? I don't know. For I this thought, one, I believe Uncle Vincent was supposed to be played by Vincent Price. Oh, oh, oh! Well, he's named after Vincent Price. Um, and Lyle Talbot. Yeah, Lyle, Lyle Talbot. Yeah. Can you imagine Vincent, though? Vincent Price would have been perfect too. He was great, but yeah, wow! I could totally see that. I love when Vincent Price goes bad. I don't know was where he, I read that, but uh, I don't I doubt you, Bill. It. Um, well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to remember. I'm, uh, I I feel like I should be able to pull this out of my uh, head. He oh. died in '93, is what I was looking at. So, um, and he was he was making films. And oh, I I do remember that. So he and uh, Tim Burton, I think, were uh, prepping Edward Scissorhands. Is what the deal was. Ah. Oh, yeah. Was why Tim Burton couldn't do it for her and why Vincent Price couldn't be in it. That makes sense. Oh. All right. All now, right. Uh, there, there is one thing I want to notice because uh, I have seen pictures of, you don't, you don't see an awful lot of pictures of uh, Cassandra Peterson other than as Velvira. And she, she's got red hair. She's got gorgeous red hair. hair, gorgeous mm-hmm. hair. Um, and, and yet for most of her career, you haven't gotten to see it. Um, but that painting on the wall of her great aunt or whatever mm-hmm. was obviously Cassandra, a painting of Cassandra Peterson. Pretty good painting too. As soon as I saw them, I was like telling my wife that that's her. That's, that's, that's actually a pretty funny gag. It looks different enough from Elvira that you could believe it's a different person, but it's the well, real just the person. hair when she doesn't have that hair on. It's yeah. crazy. The hair yeah. changes. Well, just to emphasize what Chad said. Yeah. The, the, uh, Vincent Talbot character was named after Vincent Price and Lyle Talbot, who was a character actor that had over 300 credits. If you, I'm not going to name any of them, but if you look at his uh, bio, you'll recognize him immediately as somebody that was just everywhere in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 
and eighties. Um, yeah. So what about the Las Vegas scene? Was that worth <laughs> the effort? And, uh, and supposedly I read somewhere that she was super sick when they filmed that. Yeah. She had the flu. Mm. Yeah. She couldn't tell. And that, that no. and boy, if you've got the flu, I've had the flu a couple of times and there's nothing you want to do, but dancing on stage <laughs> is definitely way down on the bottom of the list. Um, so hats off to her for that. I don't know. It was kind of an odd ending, but I guess appropriate because without that, what would be the ending of the yeah, movie? What would she could have just been like Vegas, but it, you needed to see it. Right. Like, and it reminded me of one of the old, you know, an old movie, how they do stuff like that. Yeah. It was like yeah. an old movie kind of, and yeah. I, I really kind of love that. Right. So right. I, like I don't know how much it cost, so I can't say for sure if it was worth it, but I think they needed something. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like a simple scene. Yeah, it wasn't super complex. Right. With, you right. Know, they didn't do like a Busby Berkeley, uh, just shoot for the rafters kind of thing. Well, it seems like the flash dance was Well, it more, took some... Hmm. Yeah, it took some choreography. More than this, yeah. Track rehearsal time, surely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Listen, well, if you go to time. Vegas and just wave a few hundred dollar bills around, looking for dancers, dancers, yeah, they'll every barista out there <laughs> will just come running at you. I'm a dancer. You're like, okay, come on, you're hired. We're doing an Elvira movie. But it was, so it was she, cute. It was cute seeing her do her her little routine and the tassels. Always appreciated. I mean, well, you know, she. I. I just kills me that I never got to see her show at at Knott's Berry Farm. Not scary yeah, farms. Yeah, because she did that. And now she, she, I think her last show was like two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So according to the information we have here, uh, when she did this flash dance parody, the stuff poured on her was black paint. Well, I'm glad it wasn't really tar because that would be pretty nasty. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But even then, I mean, what, didn't she get some in her mouth and stuff? I mean, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, listen, I've had soap blood poured down my throat yeah. for a death scene. You know, you suck it up. <laughs> okay. Guess what else would you use? Yeah, like right. I can't, I don't know what else he'd use. Probably black poster it, paint, edible black poster paint. It's not the worst yeah, thing. Yeah, cho chocolate syrup with black. Yeah. I, I don't know. You could, well, you could all right. Guys. So, what's any last uh, comments big. about this film? Think we're yeah, put your brain on up. hold and have a good time yeah, and appreciate yeah. it for what it is. It's not trying to be high art, but it's it's a yeah. lot of fun and it's a celebration of, of I think one of the great um genre personalities. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fun, yeah. it's a, just a fun movie. You know, and it's kind of tame. I, I this yeah, some of the jokes were probably racy for, for then, but they're kind of they're kind of tame now and, yeah. and you know, so it, it's it's a fun, just a fun thing, fun movie. If you like Elvira, yeah, you're going to like this movie. I mean, come right. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's a testament to her uh, uh, her ability, I guess, and her presence that I never saw the show, but I knew exactly who she was. It's kind of mm -hmm. like uh, Wolfman Jack. I never heard Wolfman Jack yeah. on the radio. I saw him on, uh, was it Midnight Special that he hosted? Yeah, or, yeah uh, baby. Yeah. I, I saw him on those, but I knew about him. Ahead of time that's, because he was that's a good analogy. Help. That really is. I, most of us never saw or heard Wolfman Jack, but we knew who he was. He was a personality, and as soon as someone you could imitate him, and people knew exactly who you were doing. It's interesting how some people get into the culture. You know, they get captured into the zeitgeist, even if they mm -hmm. aren't necessarily seen by everybody. Somehow, it filters around and, and, mm -hmm. and gets there. Mm -hmm. Interesting how that works. Yeah, catchphrases as well. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, guys, and she's, she's just a, she, and also, if I may add, you yeah, know, she's please. she's she's not just a personality like that, but she's a legitimate horror hostess. I mean, she can be yeah. right in there with Zachary, yeah. and who also they all had the corny jokes and they all yeah. had the, the <laughs> shtick and everything like that, and and so you know, she had that side of it, and she had yeah. this this more popular side with movies and, and, and stuff like that. So, and someone who seemed to be really appreciative of the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Oh, yeah. We, we always sweet agree. lady, sweet yeah. lady. If you meet her in person, she's just, mm -hmm. 
she'll bend over backwards to sign whatever and, and shake your hand and say hi. And that's sweet, awesome. sweet person. Yeah. And we love her back. I mean, that's, that's a lot of the horror people are like that. Sid Haig, you know, so, some Ooh. of these folks who just, they go to the conventions. They're not there to make a fortune on autographs. They're, they're having a good time and they, they express their love for the fans and we love them back. We will love them till the end of time. No matter how old they get, they will always be the 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 great horror people, the beautiful, young, or monstrous, whatever they were. We love them. Yeah. And, uh, horror fans are so loyal. I love yeah. them. And sometimes we get that back, and it's it's nice to see. Yeah. So, if she ever hears this, we love you, Miss Peterson. <laughs> oh yeah. Oof. Right All right. <laughs> Group believers. That's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we tackle oh. one chosen by Crystal, but we're keeping that a secret. But you can just yeah, imagine totally what Crystal would choose. I know. Right? Secret. She knows what it is, Ooh, but it's she's a secret. not telling. Such a <laughs> secret. Oh, I can't wait to tell you my secret. <laughs> 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 so make sure you join us for Crystal's Secret. That actually, maybe there's a movie with that title. Uh, hey. Sounds like the Oprah's Book Club selection. It does. It does. <laughs> that, anyway. that, 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 that immediately went. <laughs> <laughs> what do you always stay in touch? Please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. Or, hey, wait a minute. You can leave comments. I keep forgetting we're uh, on video now, even though yeah, I... Yeah, we know. are. Comments. Yeah, kids, we're on the video now. Right. Yay! Do that stuff. Uh, yeah, we're on, the, we're on the video machine. Yeah. Um, the YouTubes. Yeah, you don't have to sit around your radio and just imagine what we look like. Now you can actually see us in your head <laughs> your picture. radio? <laughs> 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 radio. What's a radio? <laughs> Big box with the little knobs on it. Hello. I like when Crystal called my clock in the background. Oh, you got one of those old-fashioned clocks. Yeah, it's like a tin. <laughs> like a tin. Like, like a. You mean like a digital? I don't know what it's a digital clock. It's, it's, it's so digital. crazy. I'm like, what's I mean, that's that? like the clock on your microwave. Uh, kinda. <laughs> Catch us again here in two weeks <laughs> for another great horror movie of the 1980s. There's only decades of horror can do it. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night, damn it. Good night.